the best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. And therefore, that's what I'll do. Because I work for you. And doing the right thing is doing the right thing for you. Because as we say, it's not about me. It's about we. Kathy Hochul, my lieutenant governor, is smart and confident. This transition must be seamless. I'm so sorry that you had to see that, but um, yeah. Uh, by the way, that Randy Rainbow video is still up. I mean, Randy, brother, what are we doing? Delete that. It very clearly did not age well, and I get that you probably want to leave it up because you spent so much time working on it, and you know, in your opinion, this is like art, so even if it didn't age well, you, you're still proud of your work. It just cut your losses and delete it. Like, let this be a lesson to you. Stop idolizing politicians, especially pro-corporate Democrats who essentially govern as mafia bosses. Uh, but having said that, though, the reason why I'm talking about Andrew Cuomo again is because, surprisingly, he resigned. Now, I'm not necessarily sure what it was that ultimately led to him finally realizing that he needs to resign, but I think that this interview with his accuser Maybe this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Either way, it's really nice to see government officials face at least some accountability, but him just simply resigning isn't enough. Now he needs to be prosecuted, not just for his behavior as governor and treatment of women, but because he has the blood of thousands of older folks on his hands. And thankfully, Assemblyman Ron Kim recommitted to taking on Andrew Cuomo with regard to the nursing home debacle. He says, after Cuomo goes down for sexual harassment, I'll still be here to hold him accountable for 15,000 deaths. And he adds, re-upping my commitment. So this is good. This is what I really want to see. And, you know, I don't think people truly understand how insane it is that during a pandemic, this governor, as he was allowing old people in nursing homes to die, he wrote a book about how to handle the pandemic like a good leader while the pandemic was still going on. I mean, it's, it's just insanity. And it's not just that he let thousands of seniors in his state die. He tried to cover it up. So as Michael Gold and Ed Shanahan of the New York Times explains, beginning last spring, Mr. Cuomo was criticized over a state requirement that forced nursing homes to take back residents who had been hospitalized with COVID-19 once they recovered. Critics said the policy had increased the number of virus-related deaths among nursing home residents. Residents. At the time, Mr. Cuomo and his aides dismissed the outcry as politically motivated, and in July, the state health department released a report that found the policy was not responsible for an increase. The report did, however, raise questions in some quarters about how the state was reporting deaths. In January, New York's attorney general said the administration had undercounted nursing home deaths by several thousand. Mr. Cuomo later acknowledged as much, blaming the lower figure on fears that the Trump administration would use the data as a political weapon. The suggestion that the actual death count had been covered up intensified criticism of Mr. Cuomo, including from his allies in state government. The scandal deepened after reports that the governor's aides had altered the July report to hide the true figure. In April, the New York Times reported that Mr. Cuomo's aides had gone to far greater lengths than previously known to obscure the death toll, reportedly overruling state health officials over a span of at least five months. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is not to distract you from the sexual assault and sexual harassment stories because those survivors telling their stories is really important and people need to pay attention to what they have to say. But I'm talking about this because oftentimes, once a government official resigns, people think that they've been sufficiently held accountable when that's not actually the case. And I just really want to remind everyone that Andrew Cuomo allowed thousands of people to die, lives that will never come back. They're gone forever. And he did all of this while patting himself on the back, writing a book about how to deal with the pandemic as a good leader. So it's not enough that he, you know, is resigning. He needs to be prosecuted. He needs to go to jail. Because this individual isn't just a corrupt corporate Democrat. What he did amounts to criminal negligence. And if he's not held accountable, then other governors around the country also won't be held accountable. So this isn't about Democrat versus Republican. If you think that individuals like Ron DeSantis, for example, have bungled the pandemic and have done actions that are comparable to criminal negligence, 
and worse possibly, then you also have to hold Democrats accountable as well. And what Andrew Cuomo did is, in my opinion, worthy of criminal prosecution, and I hope that he's actually going to be prosecuted for it. And I'll leave that there. He's down, but, um, you know, unfortunately, the monstrosity that is Randy Rainbow's Cuomo sexual video is still up. So maybe we can get him to take that down, and that'll be like the next victory in the Andrew Cuomo saga. I don't know.